People must develop. While being surrounded by beauty and classical music is necessary for everyone. It is indispensable, same as pictorial art, sculpture or choreography. This is something that sublimes us. Undoubtedly, it is very important. We are part of our developing history, and in this case, theater or symphony members are also part of the history. And maybe we even set the foundation of classical music performance for the future. There are a few points that we need to clarify and do quickly. First, after three, the fifth bar, you should immediately adjust to my tempo and listen to me. Otherwise, you slow down a little. Especially on triplets. Then, the first clarinet after the jump, the second jump, nine bars after the 26th digit. Remember, make the third bar forte for two bars, the first clarinet. Our orchestra is the number one orchestra in Kazakhstan. To get here, we were auditioned, we had a competition. It is a big team and all musicians are different, with different ambitions and tempers. And all musicians are of different ages. It is like one single organism. If a musician is used to playing solo, then they'll find it hard to fit in with the orchestra. Some musicians are used to performing solo only. To be an orchestra player takes a bit of learning. It requires time and teamwork. The most sophisticated instrument is naturally the violin. One must have a good ear. They must be able to hear and listen to the instrument. I mean, the musician must have gone through a huge preparation process. My instrument, it fills my mood. The violin is an extension of my arm, an extension of my body. And of course, before playing it, I will talk to it, wipe it. It is like my child. Our principal conductor is a very professional musician. Working with him is easy and is good fun at times. A conductor can simply say, here I'd like to have a special intonation. The task of an orchestra musician is to understand what the conductor wants and to implement it using their instrument. I remember one person from the audience at the conductor competition that I organized and chaired. He came up to me and asked me, what is a conductor actually for? I see that the orchestra can easily perform on its own. I can stand there and conduct too. You know, it takes a long time to reply to that. I'll just say this. What the audience usually sees is the tip of an iceberg, visible by just a small percentage. The biggest part is, of course, hidden under the water. 
What happens at the concert is the outcome of that huge preliminary work done during all the rehearsals. There are capomasters who just wave hands, and there are conductors who create the music. This is why we call them maestro. That is, the one whom I call a maestro is the teacher. Maestro means teacher, not just a conductor. As for a conductor's hands, some hands are easy to follow and are precise. Actually, there are all kinds of conductors, and there are some whose hands express very little. They draw something almost dancing the lesginka, but the result sounds splendidly. You will ask me why is that? How is it possible? Well, I don't know. For our conductor, every dot, every stroke, every melodic thought is important. If there is a misunderstanding, he will not go further. He will stop and we will definitely discuss it. He will explain why exactly at this moment a certain tone coloring occurred. And it is so exciting that three or even four hour rehearsals are absolutely a breeze. And he always charges everyone with the energy of love for music, transferring this energy to people. He studied violin, played the violin, and when we saw him conducting our student orchestra, we were certainly shocked. It was hard to believe that it was our classmate. Just a moment ago we sat at a snack counter with him. Yes, this is a great talent. A dedicated musician with many ideas and a lot of unique information in his head. He knows so much. I also actually know a lot of operas, but I can't compete with him. Conductor is the one who does the colossal inner work on the preparation of a musical project. We study many different materials. As a filmmaker shoots the entire film in his head, so the conductor also pre-plays this or that opera or symphony in his imagination and already knows what it will be like. I believe that every composer needs to be studied, thoroughly, under a magnifying glass. Study not only the notes, but the person's epistolary heritage. In general, you need to understand in what historical context this or that piece of music, say, of the 18th or 19th century was written, because all this is reflected in music. It is the style, it is the era. The era of Austrian culture before the First World War and, for example, pre-war Vienna. Creations of Gustav Mahler are all imbued with that spirit. You see, this is all inseparable. And music, classical music, is inextricably linked, in general, with the history of mankind. This isn't an abstract concept in itself. Music is part of people's lives. The conductor's task, in this case, when performing in Symphony of Mahler's, for example, is to investigate this era. The right word here is to investigate. To understand for yourself, to put together some kind of puzzle, historical context, musical, autobiographical, biographical element, an element of everyday intonation of that time. And now, having studied everything that we have, all the described points, I pick up my musical score, and nevertheless, no matter how hard I try, this will be my vision of this piece. And you see, it will still be subjective to some extent, 
because this is my interpretation of this work. People always ask me, why do you play in this way today and with a different conductor you play differently? And on another day even more different. And I reply with my own question. Did you notice that these were the same people playing? We have several conductors, wonderful conductors who have their own vision for performances, be it the ballet, opera performances or symphonic music concert. Each conductor has his own version of the piece, his own interpretation. And we never say that this conductor is better and that one is worse. No, they are all different. They can't be compared. This is art, very diverse and multifaceted. No matter how professional the conductor is, he can't know the peculiarities of our instrument and the peculiars of our backstage. That's why we have been studying music so much since childhood. We start with the basics, sound production, then gradations, and only after that we move on to such more subtle things as shades. Not even colors, but shades of colors. And the task of a professional musician in a professional orchestra is to know a musical answer to any request of the conductor in the form of our performance. Now I'll take you for a small excursion. I'll show you where we stay when we are not in the orchestra pit. This is the dressing room of all bassoonists. There are six of us working in this theater. Please come in. Here we dwell, as they say. We drink tea and have a snack here and rest during entr'actes. Here we practice and rehearse. We've got our staves and note materials in here. Before we play any performance, we play concert etudes and warm up for our parts. You can't just take out your instrument and start playing the performance right away. You have to warm up first. I was born in a city of Balkhash, and not all instruments were taught there. From wind instruments there were clarinet, flute and trumpet classes. I didn't know what a bassoon was or an oboe, and they sent me to the flute class. As for why I now play the bassoon, when I entered the school, I was sure I'd be a flute player. In addition, we were told that boys were in great demand, and doubly good if a boy was big. I was big then. They said it's good if you're a plumpy boy. You won't faint during classes. Then, already in the school's admissions office, they told me I wasn't a bad flutist, but they wanted to offer me a new instrument. They showed me the bassoon. Some guy came in, and he started playing the bassoon with such horrifying and low sound, I was shocked. After the gentle sound of the flute that I was used to, it was horrible. I said to them, I don't want this instrument. Can I have something else? A saxophone, for instance? But later, when the teacher asked other students to play, there were also the second, third, fourth year students, and as I heard another student playing the bassoon, it was Rachmaninoff's elegy, if I recall well. I was pleasantly surprised. I was very amazed. So. That's how one can really play. I asked the teacher, will I also play like that? He replied, you will play better than that. He's mediocre and you've got a talent. Can you hear? Someone is rehearsing. Let's visit them and see who is it there. Even the door is ajar. Oops, sorry for unexpected visit. We are shooting a film. 
Meet Elmira, a wonderful violinist, just a legendary personality who is directly related to our instrument. Why? Her husband is a bassoonist. Her best friend is a bassoonist. Her little son is also a bassoonist. They also wanted to send the eldest son to study bassoon, but it didn't work. He refused. That's the way it is. And a couple of future grandkids, they will also be bassoonists. In general, she raises a whole team of bassoonists and didn't want anyone to play the violin. The kid's childhood is spoiled, I'm afraid. Poor little Abrai. Okay, we won't distract you, we are leaving. Let's see our Sancta Sanctorium, the orchestra pit. We are now entering our grand rehearsal hall. We call it GRH for brevity. Here we run the orchestra rehearsals and not only the orchestra as we see. Now it seems they are preparing for the performance of Love Potion. See, they brought the wine barrels. This is our rehearsal room, shared for all rehearsals. We practice not only in dressing rooms, but also in the rehearsal rooms. There are down the corridor, some more rehearsal rooms. Do you hear now? A vocalist is practicing. Let's go see who's there. Who is this? This is our dear Yelena Ganja. Oh my god, practicing? We just heard someone was singing in the rehearsal room. You sing without a mask? Yeah, I see. This is our Lena Ganja. She's a soloist, an opera singer. She's recently sung Tatiana's part in Eugene Onegin. That's it, no more interfering. Apologies, kiss. This is our, so to say, Sancta Sanctorum, our main workplace, the orchestra pit. That's where our orchestra sits. Come here. The entire symphony orchestra is located here. Now I will show you where the bassoonist sits, that is me. Now we sit here almost in the very center, facing the conductor. We see his eyes, we see when he is happy with our playing, when he is very dissatisfied. It's good that now they conducted masks and facial expressions are slightly unclear, some kind of mystery remains. In general, the function of the bassoon in the orchestra is the one of a foundation, the bass function among wood instrument group. The flute, a bow, clarinet are more solo, and the bassoon is like a concordant cushion, like a foundation. When you build a house, you can build it without a foundation, right? Nothing is possible without a foundation. The house will simply collapse. Therefore, even if the bassoon in the orchestra plays a fake note, all other instruments must follow. As the conductor said, unfortunately, we have to adjust. They have to do it. Разбирающимся лучше кого-либо в музыке, в танцах, в философии и фехтовании. top class for me was when Alan Buribayev asked me to play a role. He wrote this play a long time ago, based on Moliere's The Bourgeois Gentleman, and I was asked to participate, knowing my KVN humor club background. If I only 
таких достоинств, как ваши, и небо, завидующее моему блаженству, предоставило мне заслужить. Conducting for a ballet is, of course, a little different since choreography is also involved. Choreography, choreographic pattern. You've got one ballerina today and tomorrow there is a different one. It greatly impacts the way the Nutcracker by Pyotr Tchaikovsky sounds today in terms of tempo. Therefore, if a conductor conducts a ballet, it is implied that he knows the choreography. An orchestra allows to open up better. All dancers are different. Some have these abilities, others have something else. One dancer has a strong jump, another one a spin. If there is a bond between the orchestra and its conductor, the orchestra can greatly help the ballet dancer. It can support the dancer and complete or finish painting exactly those shades that the dancer wants to show, convey them to the audience in a better way. If we use an audio track, the ballet dancers become hostages of the recording. Conductor and orchestra allow a certain freedom. We always accompany ballet. A professional conductor feels the choreography, and using the orchestra colors helps to create a picture with a musical feeling and backing. Opera is not sung to a track, since there is such a thing as fermatas, decelerations, and they are unique for each singer. The history of art developed in such a way that the orchestra more and more revealed relationships of the characters, revealed the drama. In general, it revealed the essence of the drama itself. At the same time, it may be that the singers did not say a single word. A character can stand on the stage and have no words at all, but because the orchestra is playing, we understand the mood of the scene and what the character's image is conveying. Live music is like a touch. When a person touches another person, this is one sensation. When we touch, let's say, an object, it is a different sensation. And it is the same here. Live performance has a different effect on the brain, on the soul. They even say that when people listen to live music, they get goosebumps. Live music makes a person perceive what they hear at a subtle level. Classical music performance affects our future, the centuries to come. Attitude of humanity towards great composers reflects our spirituality. It is really very important to lay these foundations of spirituality, to lay them correctly as this will affect new generations. I hope that the culture of our country will flourish, that we are a country of deep spirituality, that the Great Step is a place where, if left alone under the stars and the endless horizon around you, you can transform. This vision can simply turn one's soul upside down, and our land is saturated with its spirit, I am sure. And certainly, this spirituality is in the classical music, and this is what infinitely sublimes us as humans. <laughs>